Today I'm replacing the fuel lines in my McCulloch Professional Series MS4016PAV tree delimmer. Um, it's a chainsaw, two cycle engine. You need to mix the gas and the oil. Um, the symptom that your fuel lines have rotted is if you look in the tank, the filter may be just flowing around, uh, not connected to anything, and you'll see that the fuel line is uh, soft and squishy that it isn't rigid and rounded like it should be. So first thing I'm going to do is remove the cover for the carburetor. That's one screw in the center. Pull that off, set it off to the side. Next, the air filter. And that should just pull straight out. Now there's a bunch of screws in here that hold this uh, cover on and your carburetor. So the first thing I'm going to do is pull the carburetor out and then the choke right here that should come with the carburetor and there's a couple other lines here for throttle control and several other things that also need to be disconnected you'll need to remember what order they're in so that they're reconnected properly you also have several fuel lines these are for the primer and for drawing fuel into the carburetor in order to remove the carburetor we have to remove these first this is the air filter holder all that holds it in is one screw on this side, which is usually right here, and these two other longer screws that go through both the filter holder and the carburetor. They're flathead or Torx, so pick whichever one you like best. There's a cover for the idle set screw right here. You should just be able to pull it straight up and it should come right off. Now the two screws that hold the carburetor are here and here. You should be able to loosen them up pull them straight out. They won't give, that probably means that they just need to be loosened a little bit more. There's also a plastic piece here. There's one screw that holds it on separate from the other two that hold the carburetor. It also holds a couple other things. Now I remove this screw and pull the air filter holder like so. Set it off to the side. Now here's our carburetor. As you can see this is where everything goes. You have fuel lines, your choke, the start stop wire that doesn't actually go to the carburetor but it runs in front of it. And there's also a uh, way here. Now to disconnect the choke simply pull it straight out. It has a quick snap to release it. Now to disconnect the carburetor from the throttle linkage here, you'll need to pull the carburetor up and to the right, like this. And it should just pop right off there. Because all, the all it is is a bent rod and it goes through a hole on your uh, throttle control. So after we've done that, now we can remove our fuel lines very carefully. Just grab onto the back of it twist left and right, then pull straight back and it should just pop right off, like that. Now if they're stuck you might need to be a little more creative and use a screwdriver or something to apply even force to push it off of the pipe. There are four screws that hold this upper cover on. One here, one here, one here, and then one on the front towards the recoil. After they're all removed, they should be able to just pull straight up and slide off the chainsaw. So also bring with it some other parts that are related to the carburetor. Carefully set this all off to the side without losing anything. Now here's all of our uh, fuel lines. They go to the primer. Here's our power switch. So next thing I remove some of these things so we can see where these fuel lines go to. So here's what the fuel line looks like when it gets too old. As you can see, it's falling apart. There's holes in it. It's squishy. It's got parts where it's collapsed. Not very good for drawing fuel out of a tank. So we're going to replace it with some nice new line. Now, the fuel lines come through a little button right here. In order to get at that, you'll have to pull this little uh, rubber retainer off. So there's where our fuel line needs to go. 
the hole on the farthest left if you're looking at the back of the chainsaw. The best way to get it through the hole, since it's just a rubber grommet, is to pull, put the line over the hole and use something blunt, like this uh, end of this plastic comb. Put it on the section of the fuel line that goes over the hole in the grommet and just push straight down. It should uh, flex and get out of the way and then the fuel line should end up through the hole. Now, you should also get a new fuel filter and once you can see your fuel line in this hole, pull it out and put your new fuel filter on it. And then put it back in, pull your line tight so that it uh, comes up through here until the fuel filter is in the lowest point of the tank. Then we need to measure our line appropriately so that it uh, matches the path of the old line. Now since my old line was rotted, um, I'm not able to measure it. But I know where it's supposed to go. It's supposed to go this way and hook up to the carburetor. So I'm just going to put the carburetor in here for a test fit, cut my line, put it back on, and then reassemble. There are only four screws that hold your cover on for your uh, throttle. They're here. One, two, three, and four. The fourth one's kind of hard to see. It's under one of these other covers here. Once you get it loose, you should be able to start pulling up from the back. And it, you should be able to just slide it out and out of the way, like so. Now here's where our throttle is connected to the trigger. If my camera will focus. You can see right there, there's a little hole in that trigger. You just push the rod through from the other side and it should catch just fine. So now we put it all back together and we'll go on from the inside there. So first piece we need to put back in is this rubber grommet that holds the fuel lines, the throttle linkage, and the kill switch wire. Next piece we'll need to put back in is this engine piece that the carburetor bolts to. After we have these two pieces back in place, the engine cover should snap back over both of them. Here's what everything should look like after we have our top cover back on. Now we can start reconnecting the carburetor. When reinstalling the carburetor, you may want to leave the top cover removed since it will make access to the gasket that goes between the carburetor and the other piece on the engine a lot easier. So here's what it looks like with the choke back in place and this plastic cover for the idle screw. That should be it. Now reinstall the air cover, I mean the air filter and the other top cover and that should be it. There's the chainsaw running. <laughs> <laughs>